So I welcome you again on my laptop and let's go through it. So basically I have some questions here before we actually start the course so that you might have some questions about this. So I try to answer all of these. These are usually the questions which students ask me whenever in the past I have done these kind of fundamental courses for professionals or students. This course is Fundamentals of Digital Marketing where we will discuss foundational uh, concepts across all digital marketing and performance marketing at the moment which is October 2022. So basically this course contains everything that you might ever come across in digital marketing or performance marketing. All the concepts, obviously it will not be in detail but it will cover all the concepts. Basically a quick snapshot across the whole industry. And then um, who is it for? It uh, Obviously this course is for absolute beginner, basically someone who is just starting in digital marketing. This course is actually the basic, uh, the first step uh, they, they should take to deep dive into the digital marketing industry. And for someone who wants to learn digital marketing, to make their career or to grow their business. So it's equally good for both of them because because at the moment, if you talk about digital marketing, um, the space is so much crowded, full of noise. And it's very difficult to understand like the basics to nobody is taking a step back and showing, you know what, this is what everything is. So that you are able to have a holistic view on the whole digital marketing industry before you can jump or become an expert in something. And then obviously it will be helpful for preparation of interviews as well because we will discuss all the fundamental concepts you will have and even if you are expert in one of the fields after this course you will have an overview of everything you will have basically you will understand the basic concepts fundamentals terminology and at least have a thought process which a digital marketed marketer should have or begin with what should i expect from this course obviously you will know all the concepts of digital marketing in the current world as of october 2022 you will get familiar with digital marketing industry be ready to deep dive into a specific uh, expertise will this course cover any module in detail no this is a fundamental course and it will not cover any module in detail for example ppc seo or anything it will give you a snapshot of all the modules available in digital marketing at the moment, but it will, you will not be an expert in anything. This is like a beginner's foundational course. What can I do after this course? You can become an expert in one of the modules of digital marketing or performance marketing, or you can do anything in digital marketing, but this is like an important thing to have. Even if you are in something like a PR or a digital sales, this course is very beneficial for you. Any, if anyone is related to digital marketing, anyhow, this course is for them. What does this course contain? So this course contains 14, 14 modules, which I'll take you through in a bit, but they are the, the, the course is divided into these 14 modules just to make it fun and easy because I have put a lot of thought process behind how to divide this course. And then this is honestly like if I have to give you a practical example, this is equivalent to a diploma, if not better. So I have actually went through curriculum of many diplomas which are currently in the market and I kind of collated everything and then saw if this course is covering everything and it does and I'll give you some real life professional examples which some of those diplomas are not able to answer because those people are not in the industry so there'll be some quizzes I have created just I'll tell you at that moment that you need to do quiz number one quiz number two and everything will be in the description and uh, there'll be some important resources that you will need forever at, uh, as far as you're working in digital marketing they will be in description as well and there'll be a link to my website where all the resources are also collated and put in one place how do i use the course effectively just attempt the quizzes make notes back to the basics is digital marketing a good career choice uh, in short yes i would recommend this to my siblings this career I have been working in this career for 10 years now. Is it worth to learn digital marketing to grow our own business? Yes, digital marketing skills help you. It's not so if you are uh, trying to grow your online business or any kind of business and you want to leverage digital marketing, it's important for you to understand because not just you run your own campaigns and do your setup and measurement setup, conversion tracking and all that shabang. But it's also important if you're outsourcing it, you need to understand if they are doing their job properly or they're just playing around 
and even with digital marketing uh, so the good thing about digital marketing is it does not just make you job ready it also kind of helps you kind of become a digital entrepreneur and then who am i i'm 70 percent water like everyone else if you are new to the channel my name is always ahmed and i am a digital marketer working in the industry for 10 years worked with companies like google delivery hero um handled clients like Prime Minister's Office Dubai and Etisalat, Sky News Arabia, Nissan, Abu Dhabi and stuff like that, long journey. What are the different sections of this course? So that is where we actually start and these are the modules, 14 modules I was talking about. So the first one is introduction to digital marketing. Then we will discuss digital marketing lingo or terminology, then digital marketing formats and sizes, digital marketing audience, marketing research and competitor analysis, digital marketing channels, important channels, web analytics, reporting, website development, creative development and content creation, automation and tools, media planning and strategy, which is like everything in performance marketing and then we have our first module which is introduction to digital marketing okay so before we jump into digital marketing it's very important i tell this all the time you cannot be a good digital marketer because digital marketing these days is conceived so much about data and all that shebang which it is but the understanding of marketing because it is digital marketing it is focused towards data it's focused towards uh, digital channels and stuff like that but at the end it is marketing it's a part of marketing as per oxford dictionary and i believe in this i mean this kind of sums it all the action or business of promoting and selling products or services it's a process developed by any company which helps them to kind of promote their products and services uh, in order to grow their business. So when I say that promoting services or uh, goods, because any business can be roughly divided into two categories. So either a business is selling a product or they are selling a service. So Adidas, they sell a product, they have shoes to sell. Say Nike, Apple, they all are product-based companies. They have products to sell. Then there are service-based companies. So for example, a training institute, it's a service-based company, a school, a clinic, they're all service-based companies. And some companies are a mix of both. For example, Amazon, uh, they have a marketplace, which is like a service. They help sellers to sell and buyers to buy and they provide the service, which is their platform. But at the same time, they have Amazon Basics products, which they, is their own. So it's a combination of both. But that's what it is. Okay, uh, so we won't deep dive so much into marketing, but this is a very important concept. And if you're working on any digital marketing projects, you might come across this and you shouldn't be shocked what it means. So basically this thing you see here is called a marketing funnel, which is very, very uh, common to hear about within marketing and digital marketing world. Sometimes you'll just see three uh, awareness, interest and purchase. Sometimes you'll just see awareness, consideration, purchase. Sometimes you'll see all five of them so different people have different different companies have different um, what do you say different uh, sections of this marketing funnel so generally awareness what awareness means is that these are if you're talking about let's say your awareness audience bucket so this will this funnel is referred in both when talking about audiences as well as marketing initiative i'll tell you what it means so in terms of marketing initiative, if a company is telling you that we have an awareness campaign, it means that the objective of that campaign is for people to know about us, a product launch or anything. So for example, let's say if Uber is uh, launching in Egypt, they have never been in Egypt, they just want to launch in Egypt. So the first campaign objective for them would be to tell people that uber is launching in egypt so they'll probably use youtube ads to tell that uber is launching in egypt that will be probably the messaging or any creative variation of the same so that's called an awareness objective when the company the objective of the company is just for people to know that about any initiative or they are launching anything or whatever and then uh, in terms of audience, this will be the audience which already know about your company. For example, you get to start with uh, working with ABC company in your country or anywhere. Now, if that population of that country will be 10 million, there'll be, let's say, 3 million people who know about your company. So those 3 million, the size of your awareness bucket is 3 million. And then uh, the second stage is interest. Uh, 
which is how many people in terms of audience how many people are interested in your brand product or service you will know because you will kind of for people will just guess or uh, estimate it based on how many website visitors they have so how many people clicked on their ad so this will form the interest bucket it's a theoretical concept but people generally use it a lot then in terms of marketing initiative um, let's say if a campaign like uber it's already launched in egypt let's say since three years now they want to kind of run an interest uh, initiative within marketing that would mean that they will have an ad running an ad campaign running which helps users who already know about them to kind of develop interest within them and similarly consideration is for example uh, let's talk about reno reno as a company if i have to buy a car i know about reno so i'm in their awareness bucket i have interest in them as well i want to know their new car launch what features does it have I'm in their interest bucket as well. That's why it's tapered because awareness will be a lot of people. Among them, there'll be only few people who will be interested in your product, brand, company, service, whatever. That's why it's shrinking. So I'm in their awareness bucket. I'm in their interest bucket. But consideration, if I have to buy a car for anyone in my family or myself, I'll not even consider them. Probably I'll go with, let's say, Audi, BMW, or within their segment, I'll go to Nissan, I'll go to Honda. I'll go to Toyota, but I'll not go to Reno because I don't consider them. But there'll be people when they want to make a purchase decision, they will consider Reno for any reason. Maybe uh, they know that it's not as good as Toyota for them, but it's uh, price effective. It's a bit cheaper or whatever, any reason. So that will be consideration uh, in terms of audiences. Those people who consider them are uh, in their consideration bucket in terms of marketing initiative renault can run a campaign and say you know what we don't want to run ads on all the car review websites and show that you know uh, a renault ad a renault car going in desert and showing that how good it is for people in let's say gcc if they're launching in uae to show them you can go desert safari in this on the review websites, they show these kind of ads so that people consider them, think about, okay, yeah, Reno is a good option as well. Intent is probably the same. So probably when you have a lot of consideration, people who consider you, but you don't make in their uh, final list that what do I want to buy? It's like an extension of consideration so that you develop people's intent towards your brand more. And then purchase is obviously as a market as an audience is how many of those people you filter down how many actually purchase so and in terms of uh, marketing initiative you will run an ad campaign say for example a search campaign somebody looking on um, google search best car fuel efficient car in ua so you'll show an ad campaign there that will be your marketing initiative that these keywords we want to bid so that people who already have intent if they are searching for these things we just want to be that that will be in terms of marketing initiative so it's a theoretical concept but it will be more clear when we go ahead in in this course but for now this is very important to remember okay now that we know a bit about <coughs> marketing it's uh, time to divide marketing in offline and online so that we can take our route towards online marketing. Now, basically, you will hear a lot about this offline, offline, online. Um, so what it means is offline is if you're doing marketing through any channel, which is not Internet based and online or online marketing, digital marketing, performance marketing. These are um, any channels which are based on Internet. For example, offline advertising would be a TV, a radio, news, or outdoor billboards. So these are considered to be offline advertising and then online advertising examples would be or digital marketing uh, channels would be Facebook, social media, websites, emails, or even uh, holdings. So some of the holdings you see outside digital holdings, you see outside which are called digital out of home, they are now bought through digital marketing as well. So those will come under digital marketing but the generic ones you see uh, print uh, printed you see outside on the billboards that's still offline advertising so basically the thing you see on the left these are the offline marketers and the ones you see on the right these are digital marketers so the one you see on left if you are associated with advertising and marketing field in any way the left uh, the thing you see on the left madman 
it's a must see uh, it was a series uh, it's based on an advertising agency in 1960s i think or 1970s so this is based on a digital an advertising agency basically based in new york and it's an amazing series i think it's available on um, netflix <clears throat> like you have uh, suits for lawyers you have good doctor for doctors this series was for actually people advertising professionals but it's really good and if you are already associated with digital marketing you'll be able to relate to a lot of things it's it's an amazing it's based on an advertising agency and on the right hand side any marketing so this is uh, an ideal digital marketing setup an agency this you can see the difference between the people they're wearing suits and these people are like nerds this uh, is actually thumbnail of my video which has the highest uh, views ever it's about to cross half a million <coughs> but honestly like um, why was there a drift from offline to online because offline advertising is there since hundreds of years and it always kind of existed radio even before radio and tv it existed on newspapers and even before that it existed on walls and uh, billboards but now uh, with the advent of digital marketing which is just probably a few decades uh, it started probably with yahoo advertising their first banner on their website and then google search and stuff like that but what I mean, see, generally you have to understand that the digital marketing budgets we spend or uh, companies spend, this was actually they used to spend this in uh, offline advertising. So digital marketing kind of took the share from offline advertising. That's why offline advertising industry is kind of dying. So all the companies in last 10 years, I would say, who had huge teams and they used to be offline advertising agencies, they cut down probably... 80% of their staff and because companies cut their budgets and companies moved their budgets to digital marketing and digital marketing had its own share as well which we will, we will discuss but why was there a drift I mean basically why did companies took the share from offline advertising uh, whatever budgets they had for example if I work for a company and we had hundred dollars budget on advertising 15 or 10 years ago now we just spent 20 there and 18 80 on digital marketing but why why this drift uh, to give you an idea like digital there uh, as per the estimations on statista there is they are estimating that 566 billion us dollars will be spent on online advertising alone it doesn't include marketing budgets of companies which they have like social media managers or social content creators it's just advertising budgets so this huge budget and it's growing um, year by year on year but why was there a drift it's very important to understand uh, the history as they say that if you want to predict the future you have to understand the history so what happened is basically uh, there is two things that Mark Zuckerberg and people like him, the people who actually started this digital marketing trend and the industry and revolutionized it, uh, they probably did two things. One is what happened is offline advertising before was uh, focused on it, the impact and all was uh, measured in terms of what program you are sponsoring what time or what channel you are sponsoring and uh, that that's how you would kind of understand the impact of marketing obviously big companies used to understand the long-term trends and their advertising budgets to kind of predict is it helping or not but with digital marketing uh, what mark zuckerberg google and companies like what they did is they kind of focus towards ROAS which is return on ad spend so the companies can directly kind of in real time understand that if we are investing hundred dollars on digital marketing or online advertising how much profit it is generating for us which is incremental so with offline they would not be able to kind of separate the incremental value but with online and digital marketing a company can directly see that if i don't spend this hundred dollars this is the profit i make if i spend this hundred dollars i make incremental 150 dollars which is so the net profit for the company is 50 dollars so ROAS, which is return on ad spend is the key here that is why 
uh, there was a drift because companies were able to directly measure the success of their advertising and marketing. And with this, what happened is before uh, only few companies who have huge budgets would advertise or do marketing. But small companies like a retail shop or a small clinic or uh, a small e-commerce website, which they like with uh, a revenue of few thousand dollars every month. So what they did is advertising and marketing became their thing as well because they know that when we invest, we can directly know how much extra profit we more we made so what digital marketing did is it did not take the share from big companies advertising budgets from offline to them they also opened the doors for marketing and digital marketing investments for smaller companies who would not do it before digital marketing uh, as i told you like the shops and small businesses so let's deep dive a bit into this what are the benefits of digital marketing over offline it's very important to understand and they might ask you it in interviews as well so the first thing is optimization. Is it possible in offline? No, I mean, almost you can say no, because what optimization means is if I am running a campaign and I know it's not, for example, I launch a huge campaign on TV for a week. On the third day, let's say I do not have any sales. Let's say the TV campaign is about for next 10 days. Uh, there is uh, an offer on all PNG uh, products. Let's say on the third day, they understand that there is no impact. What can they do? They can either, let's say, stop a campaign, which is even not possible because when they have those insertion order orders with TVs and radios, once the booking is done, you cannot kind of stop the campaign with that short period or, or notice. Uh, but with digital marketing, what you do is if you launch a campaign, it's not working. There is a lot you can optimize. You can change the creative. You can change the targeting. You can change a lot of stuff, which we will know in this course. But basically, that is one good thing about digital marketing that you can optimize. Even if it's not working in the beginning, you can kind of make it work with different kind of tests, different kind of changes. And that too in kind of real time. You can literally run a campaign for two hours and see if it's delivering results or not and you can make changes. Or even if you have a campaign running, you can just optimize it, make any changes and within two hours see what was the impact of that change. And then um, the second thing is investments. Now, obviously, offline advertising, as we discussed, needed huge investments. If you wanted to advertise on TV or radio or newspaper, you needed huge investments. But what happens in digital marketing is it's feasible for small businesses like we discussed the uh, e-commerce small e-commerce websites it's like a spend as you like uh, thingy you can have a campaign now running for the next day for let's say two hundred thousand dollars a day and next day you can just half your budget you can double your budget you can rid completely stop your campaign for 15 days and that is possible in terms of uh, digital marketing and you can have smaller budgets as well like i have seen advertisers who run their campaigns with 50 dollars a day so which is not possible in offline advertising you either have that kind of money or you don't then um, measurement measurement is very important because in offline it's like if you run a campaign on tv there were different companies who used to have their own methods to tell you that based on uh, this channel popularity and there is some metrics for that as well. Uh, how many people saw your ad and stuff like that. What was the impact? They kind of guesstimated those things. But in terms of um, digital marketing, you can literally measure your impact and different kind of impact like what was the reach how many people saw your ad how many people clicked on your ad how many people uh, actually bought your product how much you spent how much how many sales did you generate how much revenue did you generate you can do <clears throat> let's say bl service uh, brand lift service literally you can check on youtube that okay with after running this campaign what was the impact on people who saw the ad like are they uh, how many of them remember us as a company or our product or things like that like in, you can measure anything which we will know in detail in the course then we have customization in offline you cannot customize a lot or 
nothing at all because for example you have a, a print ad on let's say times of india which is one of the biggest newspapers in uh, india if you have an ad campaign there you just they just print it and they just distribute it you cannot uh, customize anything or let's say you have you have a billboard for next 30 days you kind of pay the production cost they create your billboard and they install it that's it but in digital marketing you can customize in a lot of ways so for example <clears throat> you can have a campaign for example if you are let's say nike you can have a campaign showing uh, your male influencers and male uh, products for men and you can target them only to men and you can have at the same time a collection for women and you can target only to women and it's not just that so for example if you are running an ad uh, campaign for next 15 days let's say uh, winter sale you can have a creative and after three days you can change the creative you can change anything about the campaign so it's uh, customizable so to give you an example let's say i i work with a food delivery app so what we do is we have a campaign and we have set a rule that uh, breakfast creative should be shown from 8 to 12 uh or 11 i don't remember 11 to 2 we should show the lunch menu ads and in the evening we should show the dinner menu ads which actually made a lot of difference in the performance um so these kind of things like you can do in digital marketing but not in uh you cannot do that in terms of offline advertising one more uh, example that might help you to kind of understand is uh for example uh we have a real estate client what we do is we show an ad that, okay, you know what, we are selling this uh, villas in this project at the moment. And what we do is we have a separate campaign, people who clicked on our ad and uh, we show them ad again if they did not contact us that, you know what, we'll give you a DLD waiver if you uh, make a booking now. So you can have separate ads for kind of separate audience based on their interest level. There's so many things you can do, but at this point, you just have to remember that customization is one more thing which makes online advertising better than offline advertising. Then we have targeting. And uh, as we discussed, we can have separate uh, ads for women, separate ads for each age group based on what they are interested in. And in terms of targeting, uh, one more example I would like to give you is, for example, I uh, worked with one of the company's food delivery apps. So uh, let's say when we were targeting uh, a country, let's say Philippines, uh, what we understood is that the food, uh, the app I was working with, the company I was working with, they did not deliver food across uh, Philippines. They had certain cities in Philippines where they would deliver. So in terms of TV and newspapers, imagine how much of spillover budget you spend on, you have a ad on a national channel in Philippines and you basically advertise and pay for all the people across the country. But in digital marketing, you can control, okay, you know what, we have operations in these five cities. We'll just target our campaigns there and save on your budget and not spread uh, your budget thin across the whole country. And then uh, the other thing is global reach, uh, which means that if you are a company who run operations in multiple countries, it's very difficult to manage all the suppliers, newspaper suppliers, uh, out of home suppliers, TV suppliers, and all those uh, from if you're, for example, you're the if, for example, the marketing team is based in one country, let's say Germany. But in terms of digital marketing, you literally can run a campaign which targets anywhere in the world. And you can literally target even outdoor uh, programmatic ads, the digital banners you see outside. In some cases, you can book them while you, are, you have never been to that country as well. So, and the penetration is high as well. So for example, if you have a product or service and you want to reach out to teenagers, uh, they don't watch TV these days. Uh, they don't listen to radio they don't read newspapers and so the, the the only thing for you is to reach out to them on youtube facebook spotify and things like that okay so that leads us to our next subtopic in this section and the last one which is what are the common objectives on digital marketing so i want you to understand the basic uh, <clears throat> the common objectives of digital marketing of companies i know we we know that roughly why companies invest but I want to give you real life examples that 
whenever you do digital marketing for any company or for yourself what do the companies want basically objectives of any company who want to do digital marketing who want to invest in digital marketing can be honestly broken down into three different sections which is awareness engagement and conversion now in awareness people the companies generally focus on impressions reach and stuff like that what it means is we will obviously dif- uh, discuss all these terms in detail later in the course so when the company wants awareness objectives they will focus on they'll tell you okay with this budget how many ads will you show how many people will you reach this is true for companies who are launching a product or a service or launching a campaign or a branding campaign so for example if we are talking about um let's say ua uh, now etsalat is a telecom provider there like you we have airtel jio in india like we have uh, o2 and all in europe so everybody kind of knows about these companies right but they still run awareness campaigns about their new products or new packages so what they'll ask you basically in those kind of campaigns is or a branding campaign it's a lot can have a national day campaign telling people that how they are associated and celebrating the national day so they'll ask you that how many times the ad was shown how many people okay there are 9 million people in ua it's a lot will ask you how many people have you reached with our new branding campaign or it can be let's say uh, sky news arabia i have worked with them or bbc or any <coughs> uh, kind of news outlet like them when they run campaigns they focus on things like uh, how many impressions reach views uh, this was our news article or video how many people did you reach out to they do these kind of things because uh, to re-engage people because more people engage with their videos on facebook so their reach increases their followership increases in turn and then we have engagement metrics this will be companies where they want to achieve things like completed views as i gave you example of sky news bbc when they run campaigns they ask their agencies that okay how many people did you engage how many people uh, saw a full video on facebook from our campaign how many people on youtube so these are kind of the metrics they will uh, judge you on and these are the objectives they have and then for some companies it will be traffic to website the best example for traffic to website will be say a company is launching a blog or a person is launching a blog when they run digital marketing campaigns their objective is to generate as much traffic on their website so this comes with an engagement metrics and then there might be app install so for example if you are working with an app which is a game a gaming app or uh, let's say a service like uber they want you to kind of uh, help them uh, run digital marketing campaigns so that people install more of their apps and this still comes within um, the engagement metrics and then uh, app engagement so for example um, let's say uber uh, runs a campaign they kind of uh, put together an audience list or an audience of people who have installed their app but have not uh, ordered through their app or booked a taxi through their app in last 30 days 60 days so they run these kind of re-engagement campaigns where they reach out to their existing users so that they can start engaging with their app again so this will again come with an uh, engagement metrics in some cases and then there are initiatives conversion initiatives so companies for example if you are working with a real estate company their objective is simply to generate leads on their website or download people should come to their website they should bro- download the brochure of the project so that they can give the phone number and uh, download the brochure and they can really contact them this is the only objective they run on uh, and then obviously sales so if you are working on an e-commerce website if you work with amazon or any small uh, e-commerce website all they need want from their digital marketing campaigns is generate sales on their website so they'll tell you okay with this budget how many sales do you guarantee us and uh, this is kind of their objective so this is kind of i'm just trying to give you an idea that when companies companies invest in digital marketing in real world what are their objectives so they differ from company to company and sometimes stage to stage so uh, an e-commerce website launching in a country uh, 
initially will focus on impressions reach awareness objectives one when, once they think that okay there is enough awareness they'll parallelly or after that run engagement campaigns to generate traffic on their website when they have good amount of traffic coming then they'll be like okay now our objective is to generate sales so but whenever companies run any digital marketing campaigns they have one or more one or more of these objectives to fulfill from these campaigns and then in conversion there's always reactivating audience because uh, an e-commerce website will tell you okay you know what uh, we have users who have not ordered in the last 30 days uh, can you run a campaign and so that they come back and uh, kind of order again generate sales so then it will come within the conversion but this is just to uh, give you an idea that what do in real life what do companies want to get from digital marketing so this module uh, was kind of basic theory and a bit boring but that's the end of this module and don't forget to attempt quiz number one in the description and i will see you in the next one